here to deliver a sketchbook tour or an old sketchbook tour because I am a huge hoarder of sketchbooks and in college I would have literally like 10 sketchbooks. My drawer back at home is full of sketchbooks that I wasn't able to bring because I only brought my favorite ones and this already is a lot of sketchbooks. So these sketchbooks are from around like 2015 to 2017 so these are quite old. These were all from when I was in college studying art school and sketchbooks were my life. Like I would literally carry one with me everywhere and I would always be drawing and I would fill up one of these within a term or so. So I brought some of my favorites from my parents house and I'm gonna show you what's inside of them. So before we jump into the video, I want to talk about our sponsor for today, which is Skillshare. Recently, I did a live Zoom class with Jing Wei and I thought it was like an amazing opportunity because you're able to chat on the side in live time, ask her questions, all that stuff. And I personally am a huge fan of Jing Wei and she was doing a paper cut class. So I feel like Skillshare gives you like so many opportunities to have that like personal connection with creatives that you admire. If you don't have email notifications turned on for Skillshare, you might wanna do that. In case you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is like this online learning community for creatives and they offer a lot of different classes on like illustration, graphic design, cooking, etc., etc. And I just feel like it's a really great platform to connect with other creators as well as learn something new. I also really like that you're able to take the classes at your own pace and you're not forced to like go by a strict agenda. And I have a link in my description if you would like to try out Skillshare Premium. And after that, it's only less than $10 a month for a Skillshare Premium. And it's a wonderful time. So please check it out. And thank you for sponsoring another video Skillshare. All right, let's start. I'm excited. Let's start. So this is the first sketchbook and I started this, I want to say around like the second year of college. I remember we were taking this class where it was very experimental and we were doing collage. That's why I have a collage eye on my notebook. This is a moleskin square notebook. It's, I'm not really sure if this was meant for drawing or sketching, but I just used it as a sketchbook. I remember that I was like a really angsty artist back then. I don't even know if that's the proper term, but I would do a lot of drawings based off of heartbreak and like, I don't know why, I guess I was just really caught up in heartbreak and love and that's what was represented in my art at the time. I was also very into portraits. I would only do portraits, especially of girls. And I remember there was one time in class where someone literally asked me like, like, what, what's your favorite thing to draw? And I was so embarrassed after I said, I like drawing pictures of girls. It's, it felt like there was nothing to it more than like, I just like drawing portraits of girls. But yeah, these are just notes. I was very into just studying portraits, like as you can tell. Um, this might still be one of my favorite sketches of the time. I don't really draw like this anymore, but I was also very into quotes. So this quote just says, psychology says you're not afraid to love. You're afraid of not being loved back. And I see, I was very caught up with love, man. I mean, I feel like all young teenagers and early young adults are kind of obsessed with that. These are just some random studies. I didn't really like these. And also I'm not really good at taking up the whole space in some of my sketchbooks. I get better at it, but like before I was literally just drawing in the center of the page. I would often take my sketchbook to like museums, especially for class. We had a lot of not field trips, but we were required to go to different museums and just make sketches. This is a page of Lily J. Collins. Uh, this was in 2016 and I drew her and posted it on Instagram. And at that time I had like maybe 500 followers or something. And she actually liked it and commented on it. And I think maybe she might have reposted it. I don't remember, but that was just like my first touch with fame. And I just felt really, really hyped up and happy about that. 
Hey look, it's me. I'm a potato. Anyways, yeah, this sketchbook, uh, I don't really do well ending sketchbooks, so after the midpoint, it's just kind of, eh, not that great. This is where I got, I think I got new watercolors, and these were like the really pigmented ones. I forgot the brand of them, but yeah, it was just really fun kind of messing around with watercolors. I would also typically do a lot of figure drawings in my sketchbooks. These are all from Life, I believe. Going to art school, you have to do a lot of Life drawings, and at the time, I didn't understand why we had to do so many, but I enjoyed it nonetheless because they're portraits, and it actually helped me a lot with being more confident in my strokes when I drew, so definitely go draw more humans. I don't know if YouTube's gonna like demonetize me or something for putting nudes in here, but that's what my figure drawings look like. Maybe I'll blur it out somehow. More figure drawings. See, back then, I didn't feel like my portraits had any meaning, and till this day, I still can't explain to you why I drew so many portraits, so I don't really feel like I have too much to talk about in this one. But yeah, it kind of just ended like that, and I usually just on the end pages, I write a bunch of quotes that I really like from when I'm using the sketchbook. This is my next sketchbook, and I covered the whole front page with business cards of art that I liked. I can't really tell you exactly who these people are. I know this is Maggie Chang. Uh, I don't know. I really enjoyed all of these artists. I'm just really bad at knowing names these days, especially because the sketchbook is from 2016, so it's quite old. This one is the Cottonwood Arts one. The sketchbook is really nice if you like smooth, thick paper. This is a digital illustration that I did a long time ago. I honestly don't know when I finished it, but it was originally a ink drawing and I took it into Photoshop and colored it there. Again, lots of quotes. <laughs> don't look at my quotes. My friend drew this one. Her name is Brittany or Gadget Illustrations. And I feel like a lot of my friends always love drawing my sketchbooks just because I always had one on hand, so it was pretty handy. Um, she also drew this one. Again, I'm still very obsessed with drawing portraits and lots of figure drawings. These were really fast figure drawings. I feel like these were only a few minutes, maybe like three minute poses, two minute poses, something short. Oh, five, okay, and then it gets to five minute poses, which is more refined and less sketchy. This guy that I drew right here, he's really flexible. I think his name was Dave or something. I think we still follow each other on Instagram, but he was able to put his leg over his like shoulder blades and he did like really cool poses. So I really enjoyed drawing him. This was an, a little drawing that my family friend drew me. His name is Lawrence. And shout out to Lawrence because I feel like he watches my videos sometimes, so he drew that for me. And my username used to be Beyond the Unicorns. Can you believe that? Before Apple Cheeks, I was Beyond the Unicorns, and I don't know why I chose that name. <laughs> it's such a dumb name now that I think about it. I did a lot of like practice with um, cursive and just having better handwriting. Uh, and in this sketchbook, I was starting to compose the page a lot better than I used to. I would actually think about the way a, a page was designed instead of just slapping like an image in the center of a page and just calling it a day. And I'm pretty sure most of these models are... I think I got them from Pinterest and I can't credit the models because I forgot to write their names down, but I'm trying to be better about that. Um, in my like more recent sketchbooks, I am starting to write like the references I use just because it's always good to like reference someone. I also was starting to do a lot of like more cartoonish characters. So kind of straying away from realism and like making them a bit more cartoony with like line art. This is actually a portrait of me that I did of myself. Oh god, I was so angsty. I said, physically, mentally, emotionally tired. I'm just tired, I want the world to be quiet for a bit. 
Yep, very angsty. Oh, and this is one of my favorite portraits. I did this with gouache and acrylic, I think. And I was also doing this, like in the same class as the eyeball class, I was doing experiments with ink and gouache. So the way you do it is like you do a thick layer of gouache and then you brush over a layer of uh, non-soluble ink and then you just run it underwater and then it creates this cool texture and I just thought I would incorporate that into my painting. I'd often also pick up leaves and dry them and just try to put it in there just because I'm a very sentimental person, okay? Ooh, okay, and then in this phase of my portraiture, I think I was taking this teacher's class called Drawing for Illustrations, I believe. Is it Drawing for Illustration? I don't know, it was by Gail. She was one of my teachers, and we were using like 0.5 mm pens. Yeah, and then we were doing these type of drawings, and it just kind of also came into my own personal work. So aside from schoolwork, I was also doing it in my sketchbook, which I always like to see that happening. It's just like, you're kind of just seeing what you learn translate into your own work. More figure drawings, cause we can never have enough figure drawings. Um, figure drawing for me is always a hit or miss. I never know if I do well. Oh, okay. I put a note down here in the corner um, I remember seeing Zoe Milk and Kent Williams, which I really admire both of them. I saw them at a coffee shop and I really wanted to say hi to them, but I felt like such a creep, so I just didn't do it. And back then I was still like idolizing a lot of people, which I feel like we need to stop doing. We need to stop idolizing people. People are just people, okay? But yeah, I was really shy back then. One minute poses. One minute poses. So this was a portrait that I sketched out before I painted with oil paints. The actual one is really big. I still believe I have it somewhere in my parents' house, but there was no meaning to this. I just thought it was pretty. And then these are just like color studies on the side, which you do a lot in college. Like you have different color studies before you actually start working on the final. Ooh, toned paper, that's so much fun. It's kind of interesting to see this because at the time when I painted this white part on, it was like, it was a really, really white color and now it's like aging and it's slowly turning yellow, which I always feel is interesting to see how archival things are and how things age over time. My friend drew this. Again, this one is by Gotcha Illustration. Yep. Now I'm just experimenting with a lot more colored pens, but still doing portraits because, yeah. Ooh, okay, and this is very exciting. This is around the time where I was obsessed with Franard. I'm still obsessed with Franard, but I think I was trying to stylize my work a lot more because I was feeling like there was no meaning behind any of my works and I felt like I was just drawing portraits over and over again. So I was trying to illustrate more about my life and like things I'm going through. So this page, I'm cutting a hamburger with a fork and a knife because I had to get a root canal done on one of my, my front teeth and they told me I can't use my front teeth for like the rest of my life if I wanted to maintain it. So ever since then, I haven't really been biting with my front teeth if it's like hard. But back then I was really anal about not using my front teeth. So I was still cutting my hamburgers. Just a little illustration of me and my dog Laifu. Sleeping. Oh, okay. And this page was I had a dream that my dog peed and I think I was half asleep, but I got up from my bed. I grabbed toilet paper and I went back to bed and I woke up hugging that same toilet roll. 
So I thought it was really funny. Just some more practices with stylizing my work. I think I was having a lot more fun making pieces. This is an illustration of Princess May. I've always loved Princess May, so... You guys will love this, but I did a trade with Vicky, Thanks Shu, and this is what she used to draw like back in college, so... Hey Vicky, I know you're watching this. This one had a specific meaning to it. I think at the time I was feeling very drained because I felt like I was being pulled at all like corners of my life and I wasn't really able to fully just do things alone or to have my own thoughts. I felt like I was very controlled in every aspect and so it just kind of felt like I didn't own my body or own my thoughts because I felt like I was just there to please everyone and that's like a struggle I've been having for a long time. Um, I'm definitely getting better at knowing boundaries and like when I feel like I can say no and when to respect myself a lot more, but that was something I struggled with growing up all the time. More figure drawings. Oh, this was from a costume workshop where um, the models would dress up as a character. I think that's about it, and then it ends with more quotes. This is my next one. Um, this was a sticker from, I think, my childhood, and then I found it one day and just stuck it on. And this was when I went to San Diego with a bunch of friends, and we went to this, like, um, boating place, and we went boating? Canoeing? It's canoeing, it's not boating. Um, what brand is this sketchbook? I have no idea. Wow, surprise, surprise. We're starting with a bunch of figure drawings. I feel like that happens in most of my sketchbooks. We did so much figure drawing and I would just go to classes um, when I had extra time just because I thought they were fun, even though it wasn't required. I can definitely see that I'm improving a lot with just like speed and accuracy. And a lot of people often ask me like, how do you draw so confidently without like sketching first? It's mainly because of figure drawing. I literally would go to figure drawing all the time and it really made me super comfortable with just drawing straight with pen and just, I don't know, not really caring too much. This was a fun day. I really enjoyed figure drawing on that day because I really liked their costumes. These were fun to draw. Also, whenever I am really bad at drawing eyes or I mess up, I just put sunglasses on. Shh, don't tell anyone. Okay, so I'm exploring more of just freehanding artwork and not doing line art with these. I was getting a lot more confident. Um, these are tiny figure drawing poses. These are really fun. I actually really like how this page turned out, but these were two minute drawings. Oop, really gotta censor that. Do not look at that, kids. Oh, okay, gotta censor that too. Wow, I really did a lot of figure drawings. Oh, okay, this was drawn on the back of like a worksheet or something and I just got bored in class and I guess I drew on it. Um, that's what I really love about sketchbooks is that you can just incorporate collage into it and it just looks so cool. I love it. Me drawing a lot of angsty girls, cause why not? I love angsty girls. I can't believe I used to draw like this. This was August of 2016. So it's been a good five years since I've drawn like this, which is insane. Ooh, I like this quote a lot. Um, it just reads, so plant your own gardens and decorate your own soul instead of waiting for someone to bring you flowers. Man, quotes just really hit hard. Oh my God, this is really cute. So I really like this page because one day I was just in my backyard in, I don't know, on the benches and I was drawing a little shack my my dog was just being a little loaf of bread and being really cute and the plants were all really pretty. I honestly miss my backyard so much. That was like one of my favorite parts about living in my parents' home. 
Wow, very angsty. Very, very angsty. Um, I think these were notes that I drew over because I didn't need the notes anymore. I love how I wasn't as precious with my work back then. Like, I feel like a lot of the times I'm just too precious over the things I make and I don't have as much fun experimenting, but I really like seeing how I kind of stepped out of that inside my sketchbook versus the work I actually finish. These ink splotches are so pretty. I love how natural it dries and how like organic everything looks. I need to definitely do that. Here's Vicky again. Hi Vicky, I used to hang out with her all the time. Um, Daniela Andrada, I love her songs. She's amazing. Uh, bringing back some of that brush pen. I used to be super obsessed with brush pens and it just makes me feel so much more confident just going straight up with the brush pen. The details I used to be able to get with the brush pen. Dang, I don't think on my life, I don't think I can draw like this anymore. It's crazy. Like literally everything I draw now is just blobs and I was doing such intricate things back then. This is Brittany. I literally only hung out with Brittany and Vicky in college. So if you hear their names pop up, that's why. This was an idea for a final project, but I was realizing that this was practically impossible with the time I had. Uh, because in college, you have to do a lot of different classes and take a lot of different courses all at once. So it was kind of difficult to finish projects this big. So I really loved pink brush pens because of Audra Auclair. I honestly feel like this is really inspired by her works and I still am obsessed with her. She recently gave me one of her books. So I'm really thankful for that, but I think I just loved her to death. Like I would literally buy tools and save up for tools because of her. And yeah, some notes, more pink brush pens. Oh, this was a family friend's dog that passed away and I got really sad. So I did a little sketch of him, but I miss him. Goldie, I miss Goldie. Whoa, what the heck? Can you believe I did this entire page straight with a ballpoint pen and no sketching? That's insane. I used to be into such intricate things. Maybe I should try drawing like this again. It seems so fun. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. These pages are all over the place. <laughs> this day I was sick and all I can say was, I want mashed potatoes. Who doesn't like mashed potatoes? Ooh, and I think, I think after I said that, I think my friends brought me mashed potatoes. So that's pretty cool of them. Much appreciated. And this was right before I left for Italy and I actually have an Italy sketchbook tour. It's this one and I kind of just have like a lot of drawings and things in it. If you want to see it, you can go look at it. Please excuse my editing in that video. I literally just started making YouTube videos and I feel like it's just kind of all over the place. I was trying to figure out my schedule for my next term. Uh, so there's that. Also, can we just, can we just look, I go from this, looks fine. And then I'm drawing like some Bob's Burgers type of stuff on the next page. I love sketchbooks. You can just literally go from a hundred to zero within one page flip. Oh, and I guess that's the end. I typically, I guess I don't finish a lot of my sketchbooks. I'm trying to get better at that. I'm trying to go back to old sketchbooks and finish them up before I get new ones, but it is definitely a struggle. So this is one of the last sketchbooks that I wanna show you all. I got this notebook at Daiso. It's not really meant to be a sketchbook, but I was really into like pen work and I didn't feel like I needed an actual sketchbook to do that. I could just do it on regular paper. 
And this is, I think, the most transformative out of all my sketchbooks. Like, this is where I really went out of my comfort zone of drawing simply just portraits. And I just, you know, found my, my style and my voice and my work through the sketchbook. So, this was my first, I guess, ugly sketchbook. Um, so I set some rules for myself. Sketch anything and everything. Experiment. F things up. Um, you don't have to post and share everything you draw. Draw tons. Practice, practice, practice. I think I was struggling during that time because I was literally posting every single day on my Instagram to my like 500 followers of just schoolwork. And so this sketchbook really just let me branch out of that and just sketch for fun. This was done in 2017. Again, I was really into like fine liners and brush pens. So most of this is just going to be black and white sketches, mainly observational sketches. And I think that's how I really got out of like realism and started stepping into more stylized work is just by drawing things from observation, but making it your own style. And then after that, I took it into drawing things without reference, like this page, and just trying to draw things from memory. And I think that's where my style really started to show a lot more. I started doing a lot more like full spread pages. Ooh, I really like this study. I think I just bought a book this time. I still have that book, but it was a book full of just flowers and natural shapes that I enjoyed. I was also taking a sewing class during this time. I believe this was probably like my junior year of college. And so I was doing a lot of sketches of ideas that I wanted to do. I didn't get to finish a lot of these ideas, but it's fun to draw them nonetheless. These are just class sketches that aren't that pretty. So I'm going to flip really fast. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, this is this is just like studies of things. I kind of like this illustration. Like maybe I'll do something with this. Also, I haven't seen these sketchbooks in a long time. I really like this illustration. I think I was really into rose-colored glasses at the time. A drawing by Vicky. A drawing by Darren. Okay, I don't really like these pages, so let's let's keep going. Let's let's. Ooh, okay. I went to this convention. I think it was Designer Con, and I met some artists that I admired, and I asked them if they can sign my sketchbook. So here are just some of their sketches. Let me just go to the good stuff because this is all really bad in my eyes. Yeah, what 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 is this? What what am I drawing? I don't There was one day that I got off of work. I used to teach kids like art and I got off work early and I think it was like the winter time, so it was dark out really fast and I was literally sitting outside waiting to be picked up and I got hungry so I ordered like a pad CU from the Thai restaurant next door and people were literally like walking up to me like are you okay? do you need help? like why are you sitting at the side of the road eating a pad CU? and I... I don't... I don't know I really like this liquor store across the street though it was really pretty Look, I'm mowing my eyebrows. Oh, these pages are very hard to turn. The process of finding your style, I feel like, is not pretty. It can be ugly at times, like it might not look pretty. So I think that's the importance of having a sketchbook where you can just mess up and do whatever the heck you want to figure yourself out. Not just draw pretty things, which I thought I used to have to do because all my sketchbooks, I would make it as perfect as possible. 
but just having a sketchbook where you can just do whatever you want that's how you really find your voice in your work and I guess that's it yeah that's that's all my sketchbooks hello it's me again I'm back so before I say goodbye I just wanted to talk a little bit about sketchbooks I feel like they're so important especially if you want to grow creatively. You can always use sketchbooks as like a journaling space, a safe space for yourself. You can write in it. It doesn't necessarily have to look exactly like mine or look like anyone else's sketchbook, but you can make your sketchbook what you want it to be. It can be really clean, like some of the stuff I have, or it could be really messy and have ugly sketches. I personally like to have multiple sketches going at once because I just prefer different types of paper and I don't like just like saying that I have to stick to like one sketchbook for the entirety until I finish it. But it's really up to you and I, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was interesting and thank you for being here and thank you for being so cool. Please smash that like button until it turns blue. Sorry, I'm not Graham Stevens, Stefan. I'm not Graham Stephens. I don't I don't know how to pronounce his name. But yeah. Bye. I'll see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.